Hello YouTube, today I'm going to go over six species of loaches that you may or may not heard of. Uh, we all know of zebra loaches and clown loaches and yeah they're beautiful but there's so many other loaches out there that just don't get the recognition. So I'm going to go over six of them right now. Now I gotta say, they may not be the bell of the ball, but they'll turn a head or two. And what they lack in appearance, they more than make up for with their just outrageous, goofy, sporadic behavior. They're just so much fun. So let's just get right into these six species of loaches. So the first loach I want to show you is the spined loach. Uh, this loach comes from all over Europe, France, UK, Ireland, Scotland, Scandinavia, basically everywhere. Although it's still not very common in the hobby. So hopefully uh, some of you will pick some of these up because they're pretty awesome. So they're a peaceful bottom dweller. And I mean, all the loaches I'm going to show you today are peaceful. So let's just get that out of the way. Uh, and loaches are also a very social fish. So definitely need to be kept in groups. But back to the spine loach. We're talking a pH of 6.5 to 8.5. Uh, temperatures, these guys can go really low. Like real, like down into the 50s. Now, we don't want to keep them down there for extended period of times. But they can go really low. Uh, so great for unheated aquariums. I mean, perfect for unheated aquariums. Uh, they do get about 4 to 5 inches. They are omnivore, but definitely are going to be uh, more meat eaters than algae eaters. So live and frozen foods, very, very good for these guys. And their natural habitat, like most loaches, are going to be from streams, lakes, rivers. Uh, these guys are even found in ditches. Now, one of the cool things about these loaches, and you'll probably hopefully never experience this in the aquarium, but similar to uh, some Ancestris, Corydoras, um, and some pigs, actually, uh, they can do what's called intestinal breathing. So if the oxygen content in the water gets really low, you'll see them at the surface. They'll come up to the surface, they'll gasp for air, uh, they'll go into their intestines, and the oxygen will get separated, and they will use that as air. So... Pretty interesting, not something you see uh, in loaches very often. All right, so next up, we're probably going to be looking at one of the best looking loaches you're ever going to see, uh, and that is the red lizard loach, sometimes called a red lizard hill stream loach. Uh, they come from Malaysia and Thailand. They definitely prefer strong flow. As you can see, they hang out right at the outflow of this power head and the outflow of the hang on back filter. Now, while most, if not all loaches prefer stronger flow, it's really not that important to duplicate that in the aquarium. But what comes with high flow is high oxygen levels and that is what's important. So be sure to get like a sponge filter or at the very least an air stone, something to keep the oxygen level a little bit higher than normal. So their natural habitat again consists of gravel and rocks. Uh, they get up to three and a half inches. Now, if you really want to have success with the red lizard loach or any of the so-called hill stream loaches, you definitely want to use a seasoned aquarium. Putting these in a new aquarium is almost a death sentence. They love to graze on biofilm. It's very important to them. So if you just set up your aquarium, I'd give it at least six months, get some nice little algae growing on there, and uh, that'll be just fine for them. Now, just because they graze on biofilm, uh, that doesn't mean that they're not carnivores. You still need to feed live and frozen. I do frozen Daphne and frozen bloodworms, and they love them. Super cool fish. Temperatures 68 to 78 degrees. pH 6 to 7 and a half. Pretty standard uh, and just a really, really beautiful loach. Next, we have one of my all time favorite loaches, the zipper loach. And these are very, very widespread. Uh, come from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Thailand, Borneo, Myanmar, like literally everywhere, uh, which is one of the reasons they're very inexpensive. Uh, you can usually find these for around five to seven dollars so you can get a nice big group of them and it will pay off. This is basically a mix of a goby and a loach. So loaches are already like the gestures of the aquarium world, right? They're just super goofballs. These guys really behave like gobies with a little bit of loach kicked in. They're just super active. They're super awesome. They're all over the place. They're full size right now, right around three inches. pH again, six and a half to seven and a half. Uh, now these do like the standard tropical temperatures of 75 to 78. They are kind of sand sifters, so they love to sift through sand uh, to find like little morsels of food. And one of the great things about this loach is that they are incredibly hardy, super hardy, almost like white cloud hardy. Uh, uh, so. That and the fact that they're inexpensive, this is like the perfect beginner loach. Not that any loach is really difficult to take care of, but this one, uh, this one sets the bar high as far as entry level. I, I would highly recommend this loach as your first loach. They're just very fun, very cool, super active, and not at all 
uh, aggressive towards other fish. Uh, next, we have a really fun loach. Not that the, the others aren't fun, but they're all fun in their own unique ways. So the Zodiac loach, uh, they come from South India. They get about two and a half inches. These are full grown. All my loaches are, are adult size. So what you see is how big they're gonna get. Temperature wise, 64 to 70 degrees, pH six to seven and a half. Again, omnivores, but uh, these guys are definitely gonna prefer lots of bugs, worms, crustaceans. That's what they eat in the wild, uh, but they'll also graze on biofilm. And they'll also take any high quality prepared food like extreme or bug bites. They love both of those. Those are a staple in my fish room. Now, when I say these have interesting behavior, it's actually really cool. So they're not aggressive. However, they do play king of the hill. So one of them will get up on this piece of wood and the others will try to knock him off. It is so funny. Uh, one will take over this little piece of wood and then another one will come and try to push him off. And it just goes on and on and on. It's very fun, very peculiar behavior uh, and just, just a super fun loach. Next up, I wanna talk about uh, the ornate sand tiger loaches or just the tiger loach, ornate sand loach. It's got all kinds of different names. So ornate sand tiger loach is what I'm calling them. They come from Thailand and Cambodia. They max out at about three inches. Uh, like most other loaches, they prefer fast flowing, highly oxygenated water, very important. Uh, again, is the oxygenation more so than the fast flow. Temperatures a little wider than the uh, zippers. They're 68 to 78 pH is seven to eight. And they are omnivores, but again, uh, they are gonna prefer a meatier diet. Now they are not aggressive. However, they are very boisterous. So do not put them with like self and tetras or tina pomas or small dither fish, uh, things that just will get outcompeted because they will go after food with a passion. They are incredibly food motivated. They eat out of my hands. Like they just don't care. They're like dogs. All they want is food. It's pretty funny. And the other interesting thing about the sand tiger loach is they have longer barbells than most loaches, which is just kind of a neat feature. Uh, can't say enough good things about the sand tiger loach. So last, but certainly not least, is the pasta loach. Uh, this loach comes from various rivers in Vietnam. Adults range from three to four inches. Again, what you see is how big they're gonna get. This species is a bit more territorial than your average loach. Uh, again, not aggressive. They just like to have their own little territory. So lots of rocks are good. I need to get some more rocks into my aquarium, as a matter of fact. Uh, but yeah, so they're just a little territorial, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna kill anyone. They're not gonna hurt anyone. Uh, it's just mostly posturing, uh, so not too bad. But again, having lots of hides and line of sight breaks is gonna be very important. Temperature-wise, they can also be in unheated aquariums down to 60 degrees and up to 78. pH is gonna be from six to seven and a half. And again, with highly oxygenated water. And again, they're an omnivore too, but like all the others, they're gonna prefer uh, live frozen foods over algae. I, I would feed mostly meat and maybe like an algae wafer like once a week. And again, they will accept any high quality prepared food. Uh, again, my favorites are extreme and bug bites. Uh, this is one where when the males are ready to spawn, they get insane like reds and pinks on their tails. It just looks really cool. Uh, and I think I forgot to mention that about the zipper loaches too. The zipper loaches will also turn a really bright reddish pink uh, when the males are ready to spawn. It's very beautiful. So not a lot left to say about the pasta loach, just another really uh, beautiful species that you don't see very often. Uh, and I'm trying to highlight all species that you don't see very often. So yeah, there's no true hill stream loaches in here. There's no clown loaches, just some awesome loaches I'm trying to spread awareness of. All right, YouTube, there you go. Let me know down below if you've kept any of these or maybe some other species of loaches that should get some shout outs. Uh, you know, there's dwarf chain loaches, rosy loaches, so many loaches out there. We need more loach content. Now, if you can't find any of these at your local fish store, I have teamed up with two of the best online vendors out there, dancefish.com and thewetspottropicalfish.com. I've got discount codes for both down below. And that's all I got for you. Till next time.